my god. What, what the? What the? What is going on with Iron Blooded Orphans? Is Tamino secretly writing this shit? I mean, really? Really? I mean, we knew bodies was going to drop. But at the rate that we're losing characters in this series? Seriously, what? What? No. No, no, no. No. Not another one. Oh. I haven't seen this many people die in a Gundam series since Victory Gundam. Gundam Zeta, old school Gundam with Tamino. This guy, who was writing this series? This is like his protege or something. That mean, kill them all is pretty much going to be the tagline for this series because nobody's making it through. I mean, let's be real here. We knew we were going to lose characters. At the very least, we still know that we might lose Mika. We might lose Orga. We were ready to accept that. We were. We were ready to accept that. That was fine because that was just going to be the spoils of war. Shino? Shino, Shino of all people, the Rusei Go is gone. Oh, the shining glory, the smile of the team has just been taken out in this episode. We didn't even need to lose Shino. Like Akihiro, if he died, then yeah, we would kind of be happy if he died because everybody that he loves is gone anyway. He could have been reunited with them. We would have expected that. Shino? Shino was supposed to be the guy to make it to the end, the one that tells everybody to smile, at least we're still alive. The person that probably could have told the story. <sighs> Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron Blooded Orphan, Season 2, Episode 20, Episode 45. Just leaving us wrecked once again, just completely destroyed. The death count in Season 2 has just been ridiculous. I mean, at the most part, we only lost, like, what, Biscuit in Season 1. We're losing everybody in Season 2. At this point, my question is, who is going to make it? Who's going to be left at the end of this story? Jeez. This series has no chill, man. None. None whatsoever. Zero fucks given, and my rage just grows more and more every time we lose somebody, and that crusty fucky yoke is still alive. He's going to drive me nuts. It's gonna drive me crazy. Let me, let me compose myself. Let's get to the episode. Bring it down, Scott. <sighs> Here we go. Well, if anything, we have to commend Rustal. You have to. This man's mind is off the charts. He is a general or whatever position he is for a reason because this plan that he put together was exactly what he needed to take down Tekadon. I mean, divide, conquer, destroy. This is what this guy is doing. He's splitting Tekadon up into little pieces and he's taking them out one by one, even to the point where he is using his little web of deception, even on Julieta. He knows how strong she wants to be. He knows that she wants to prove herself. He knows that in order for them to be effective, they have to take the Barbados off the field. He knows that Orga doesn't have the same battle mindset that he does, and he knows that if Orga split away from Fareed, they're not gonna know what to do. And he executed that plan. <sighs> I mean, I had lots of words of how flawless this plan was for Ruth Stahl. I mean, in all intents and purposes, this guy's the bad guy, but he is the smartest tool out there. He is the king chess player right now because he divided Tekadon up. He sent Julieta using her rage to distract the Barbados, basically to keep the Barbados distracted while he took out the fleets little by little. And in some ways, he's checkmated Fareed in this with doing that because Rustal was even to the point where his plan was flawless. I mean, it was clean. You can't hate on it. His plan was clean because what he did to turn the tide of his battle was to use the illegal weapon that has been a focal point pretty much this entire second season by infiltrating other suits. He had somebody take out one of Team Fareed's side, drive the suit, and use the illegal weapon. Once that illegal weapon was shot, that gave him fair reign for all of his troopers to use the clone one to pretty much wipe everybody out in a clean slate, take them out. I have to commend him for that. That was great. It was slimy as hell. It was cheap, but it was great because he said, oh, you guys are using illegal weapons? Well, we can use them too because we're actually the army and now that you use them, we're not going to get in trouble. Well played, Rustal. Well played. 
and Orga, he doesn't know what to do out there. All he knows is to charge forward and wait for Fareed's, you know, assistance or his destructions on what to do next. All they know is, is that this is their last battle as Tekadine. They win this battle. They're free. They can do what they want. He even said, you know what? We win this battle. Then we can do whatever we want. All the money, all the girls, whatever you want. And I love Akihiro's line. Um, what, he, what he said, he was like, Orga said, you know, all the money, all the girls. He was like, don't have one. Don't need any. That's my boy right there. He's out there to fight. My girl's dead. I don't need no money. I save all my money. <sighs> I mean, you cannot not love how much pure rage, anger, and fight that Tech and I has, but at the same time is their downfall too because they're going against a military power unlike they've never seen before with Rustal. And Rustal, this chess match of wits between him and Fareed, Rustal is clearly winning right now. He's even doing things to retreat to get everybody to say, wait a minute, why are they retreating? Should we follow after them? Should we retreat too? And right when they had their defenses down, that's when he started railing fire with the illegal weapons. The main Tekkenai ship has been taken down. They got everybody out. Shino had a broke arm because he got hit with the illegal weapon. Man, it was just carnage everywhere. And we got a couple of battles building up as well because it looks like next week we're going to get the battle between Fareed and Vidara, or now Galeo back in the Chimeras. The true Chimeras out there looking like a fusion between the Thunderbolt Gundam and the Chimeras with the shields and everything going it. You got these two battles going together, and this one of these episodes where I couldn't help but still be on the side of Fareed. I'm still Team Fareed, but it was episodes like this where his care, his charisma is carrying everybody through. Him and that bile with the sword up in the air saying, we must rally together. This is the will of Agnika. Let's move forward, and the troops are like, yeah! But even Rooster all is not phased by that. He was sure Eokai is done. Let me show you how you can use this weapon. Let me show you what you were trying to do. Let me show you how to win a war, boy. Because he was telling Eok that we're purposely just going after the Tekadon soldiers. Because if we take them out, we take Farid out, the rest of these people are just soldiers within Gallahorn. We take this guy out, they're going to fall back to us. Why thin our ranks while we can have them join our side? I mean, I was blown away by the strategies that Rustal was pulling off in this episode. And we got the battles coming next week. Again, we're going to have Julieta versus Barbados. Again, because she just keeps getting in, her, in his way. And Mikazuki's going to get pissed. He's going to stop fucking around with her and be like, you know what? I'm just going to wipe her off the map. And then we got Fareed versus um, Galeo coming as well. So I definitely can't wait to see that next week. <sighs> now we need to get to the rough stuff. Now, something I usually don't focus on, and it's fine because Sunrise gets a pass. Sunrise usually consistently pumps out quality, but the animation was very lacking in this episode. A lot of times, the derps were real with how the animation looked. I mean, especially like the scenes with Mikazuki and Julieta when they were battling. That just looked bad. I mean, it doesn't bother me in the least, but you know, bad animation is bad animation. It must have been really bad if I noticed it because some people see it right away. I was just noticing this episode that the animation wasn't at its best. And coming towards the end of the series, I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's not Gundam Wing bad like when they were using recycled scenes all over again. It'll never be that bad again. But there were very many scenes within this episode where it just looked like the characters were rough drafts. So, I know for once, Gundam gets a thumb down on animation for that because even though the overall the episode was beautiful, it was just some scenes that stood out so much. It just kind of threw things off because that's how noticeable it was that it took me out of battle. I looked like, wow, that looks really bad. Also, I haven't been giving Chad and Dante enough credit in this series because they've been going in. They were a big part of this battle and they always come back unscathed, alive, doing their work. Ryde has been out there too, but I've been hyping up Ryde. But these two people, I didn't know that Chad was that much of a beast. Maybe I just haven't paid attention to it. But when things were down, they go back to the ship. I don't know this character's name, but the guy with the Pondipore, he's always like, he's pretty much the viewer. He's the one that's saying, why do we keep charging forward? We're just going to die. And the old man, the mechanic, he's always there to say, I told you more times than once. Stop trying to talk to these people into not killing themselves. They're going to go out there and give their all no matter what. You're wasting your breath. So either you're going to be with them or get off the ship. I mean, the guy's annoying, but he's the voice of reason. So um, 
you can't knock him for that. But something that I really want to talk about is um, the relationship between Yamagi and Shino. Now, we know the relationship between these two guys is there. We do. But I have to commend how tasteful that this series is focusing on their relationship because you know something's going on with them, but it's not in your face. It's just they just have little moments together like they had towards Shino's life in that you knew something was going on. And Yumagi was like, you know, if you die, I won't forgive you. They had the little head butted brace. I mean, it's kind of like a bro love between them, but we know it's more than that. But it's just done so well. And I, I like that the this anime is actually, you know, addressing that in a tasteful manner and not putting it in your face like some other series. So that was good as well because it shows that these two really do care about each other. Like, he was like, let's go to a bar. Let's go get some drinks with some girls after this. And Yamaki looked a little bit sad. Then Shino picked up on that and then he just pulled him in. He was like, all right, it'll be just me and you. We'll go get some drinks together. So that was a really nice scene. I like the focus that they, that they had on those two. And especially Yamagi knew that Shino wasn't coming back because pretty much at this point, Tekadon's plan, because at this point, Fareed was basically just out there rallying the troops, trying to fight forward and clear up some space. First and foremost, they were going to use, or Orca came up with, is to use the Barbados to pave the way towards Rustal's ship, because they're in the same mindset too, that if we take out Rustal, then the rest of the battle is ours. So they're going to take out Rustal, have the Barbados be the vanguard to clear everybody out. They were going to use their damaged ship as a shield to push forward to take in all of the blocks and then Shino in the Rusei Go was going to use his super galaxy cannon the original illegal weapon to basically shoot down Rustal's ship that was their plan and I don't know I mean I don't think they pointed this out in the series but all this I don't want to say it's all Shino's fault but it is the Gundam Floros's fault because he brought this weapon onto the field with this Gundam and the copies that were made by Eok and all the Rustal's fleet throughout this episode to cut everybody down just in bad numbers all originate from this Gundam. So it's only right that he had to take it out. But it's also ironic that he was taken out by the thing that his suit has. So they do succeed in getting to Rustal's ship. The Super Galaxy Cannon, again, is the original illegal weapon that Shino was going to use to shoot. He takes his shot, but he misses. Fucking Eok, once again... In a ship that doesn't get blown up by the final plan. As he was going to go down in a blaze of glory. Taking everybody out. And at the very least, Rooster is still alive. Because we see him at the end in the preview for next week. And when he missed that shot. Just that scream in the way that the other suits just started shooting those illegal weapons. And I'm just blowing this suit apart. And to see that blood in the cockpit. I needed a moment. Because Shino's sacrifice was in vain. I mean, one thing that I do want to point out, I want to point out a plot hole in this, that if the copies that Roostall's team was using can shoot so far away, why did he have to get so close? I mean, maybe it was supposed to be a sneak attack, but I felt he probably could have shot from further away at a safer distance. It wouldn't have died. Oh, man. Rest in peace, Shino. You are a beast. At this point, nobody's safe. I mean, if anybody else dies in this series, it's probably not even going to affect me anymore because we've seen so many people die that didn't deserve to that if Akihiro dies, I don't even think I'm going to worry about it now. And I'm not saying it like it's a bad thing, but I haven't been hit like this by a Gundam series in a very long time. So, yeah, I would say once again, depending on how Iron-Blooded Orphans ends, this is definitely going to be one of my top three Gundams. The question is going to be, where is it going to land in my top three? So once again, props to Rustal, even with Julieta. He knew Julieta would do anything to prove herself. And he knew that she was at least adept enough to distract the Barbados while he does his reign of destruction. But I'm pretty sure she's going to come to her end now that she's let loose with Mikazuki by himself. He's going to be fueled that Shino's dead. Oh man, I cannot wait. I just want to see Eo burn. Rustal's off the hook. I want to see Yoke burn. I just want to see this this dude. He needs to die. I'm sorry. No, at first I was like, you know what? Death is too good for him. But now he needs to go. I mean, he's seen how a real boss handles war. Now he can get out of here. 
Well, I can't wait till next week. I'll tell you that. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as there's not a shortage of content you guys indulge on on this channel. And I absolutely love talking about Gundam with you guys every week. So, I cannot wait to see the comments. I'm going to get up out of here. As I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. But you chose to listen to me. I really appreciate that, so thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out, emotionally wrecked after this episode. See you soon.